Today we're going to be repairing an iPhone 7 screen. Um, as you can see on this one, it is all cracked at the top. So we're just going to replace that screen out. Boom. So I'll go through the tools that you'll need for this one. So you'll need the ice testament um, just to open up the sides of the screen and get under a few cables. You'll need your Phillips screwdriver for most of the screws inside of it. You'll need your torque screwdriver for the bottom screws on the device. You'll need your tri-ring screwdriver, your little four point or three point um, screwdriver. And that'll be for some of the other screws inside. You need your spudger um, just to get under cables. The device is turning on apparently. Um, just to get under other cables. You need a spudger to get um, some connectors out and some other cables out. And then you'll need some tweezers just to get behind some cables, make it a little bit easier for yourself. Brilliant. So I'll move the screws aside. And the last thing you'll need is just a little tray to put your screws in, um, just so that you can put them in the right place and they don't get them mixed up. You can either use a tray or you can use um, a magnetic mat. Anything you can just kind of put your screws in and you can put them in the same order you took them out so you don't get lost and cause more damage. Right. So on the device itself, we'll start off with two screws at the bottom. You'll need your tall screwdriver for that. Make sure you also obviously turn off the phone before you start any repairs. Just as a little keynote. Then what you want to do is you want to get your ice system and you just want to go around the edges and just slightly push it in. Um, don't go too far, don't push the ice system too far because you'll hit the home button cable. So you're going to lightly in and just give it some flex just so you can get your nail under it or if you don't have long nails you can get something like a um, guitar pick or something put it in there just to hold it in place so you can move around the sides. So what you want to do with the sides is just want to get your ice system in not too far. You'll kind of hit a wall anyway. You can't go any further than that. And then just slide all the way down. We'll do that for both sides. And you'll feel a pop up. So with the iPhone 7s, um, you don't want to open up too wide. You kind of just want to put a pretty much like a finger length in between only because if you can see over there that's the actual cable for the screen so it kind of folds out like a book so you want to be careful with that cable obviously the screen is damaged um, so you can damage the cable but obviously it's best not to damage anything so just watch out for that cable um, next what you want to do is you want to do the same with the top so just go in gently with the top with those little bezels there it hooks under the actual frame itself so you just kind of want to ply it out just to get it, those bezels out right. and once that's out you can lift up the screen so the screen I normally fold it down to the left hand side um, but it pretty much opens up like a book like that and you want to kind of lift up the screen just so it's fully out but obviously not too high so you don't damage those cables there Brilliant. So by the looks of it, this one has been repaired before, as there's a screw missing there and a screw missing there. So what we'll do is we'll have to put in those new screws. And by the looks of it, the battery is wobbling around. So yeah, you can lift up the battery. So we'll 
put some adhesive on the battery as well. Right, so what you want to do is there's normally four screws on this little plate. Um, those two screws they are missing. So we'll take out the other two screws and then put them in the same order you take them out. And then you want to put the little bracket that you lift up off it with it as well. So once those screws are taken out and the plate's removed, you want to lift up the battery connector. So the battery connector is this one over here. You can see the battery actually running down to it. So you want to lift that one up. You can obviously use something like an Isesimo to lift that out. Just get underneath it and pop it out. Um, with the Isesimo, it you can end up damaging some other chips on the main board um, because you obviously can't feel what you're doing. So I generally use my nails to get underneath it and pop that up, but obviously you can use other tools. All right, so that once that's up, as you can tell, they've put no adhesive on the back of this battery. So I'll put new adhesive on that. So we'll take out the battery anyway. And then what you want to do is you lift up the two connectors for the actual screen itself. So that's the bottom part of the screen done. So now we'll move on to the top part for the front camera, um, earpiece and proxy sensor. So same with that is it's normally got two screws, one screw back there behind the cable and then the other screw over here. Obviously that screw isn't there. So we'll just remove the other one. And then same with this, just put it in place so you know exactly where it's come from. And then what you want to do is you want to lift up that cable for the front camera. Obviously that one isn't the easiest one to lift up because um, you can't really get your nails underneath it. I generally use tweezers for it. You can still use a spudger. Just get underneath it and pop it up. Right, so that's the screen now. As you can see, that screen has been replaced before they've left the little film on the back of the actual LCD um, so when we put a new screen on it we'll obviously peel that off but it's a very common thing that other repairers do they end up leaving that film on so we'll take that off right so the, fo the phone itself you can put it to one side for now and we're just going to focus on the actual screen itself so with this, I generally start from the bottom, work my way up. Um, obviously, you can do it any way. Um, the plate is generally the last thing to come off, but you can take off the home button or the earpiece first. You can start from top to there. Um, doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as the plate comes off last, because that goes under some of the um, brackets at the bottom and brackets at the top. So we'll start with the home button. Um, I generally start off with the first little screw first because that screw actually screws into the actual home button itself. So you want to try not to put too much pressure to this. Mm. Let's turn it that way. Actually. You want to try not to put too much pressure to this because um, you can end up damaging the home button. So just a light little push and unscrew. So same with this. You want to put everything in the same order you take it out so you know exactly where it goes. Uh, it's just got four little screws along this bracket that we'll just take off. And then you can lift up the little plate. <coughs> and that will be the plate out. So put it with your screws. So once the home button is taken out, we can then go to the top, go to the earpiece. Um, and this will use your normal Phillips screwdriver. And same with this one, it normally has six screws. So it would be the one, two, three, four, five, six. Obviously that screw there and that screw there is missing. So there'll just be the four screws that we'll need to take out of this one. So same thing, take out all the screws, put them in one place in the exact order you got out, got them out. And then you'll take off the bracket. 
uh, lift up the front camera and then you can take out the earpiece. Right, so getting out this flex cable is probably one of the harder things to do as you can end up damaging the proxy. Um, obviously if you damage the proxy on this you can just replace it out but tend to try not to break anything on it. So what you want to do is get the isosomer move the camera out the way and you want to kind of come in from the top and just go behind the actual flex and in between the little bracket I don't know if you can see it so kind of got behind this little black flex in between the actual frame and the black flex flex there'll be a little bracket that the proxy is sitting in so you want to kind of try and break that bracket and lift it out. Sometimes the whole bracket comes with it, sometimes it just gives it enough room for the actual proxy to come out itself. So the bracket stayed in place, the little plastic bit over there stayed in place, but the brackets just come out. So that's perfect. So what you want to do then, is you want to get uh, some tweezers just get behind this flex and then I'll get the ice system again go back from this side get under the flex I will say this will be a lot easier than um, doing it with a phone that's never been repaired before because obviously all this adhesive has been pulled off once and put back on so it's not as strong as it normally is um, but yeah so we'll just go with it um, you want to try and get your eye system mode behind this flex and just lift it up. There's normally quite a bit of adhesive behind that and lift it up. And as you're going, just slightly push it up. Yes, sir. And that'll be your flex out. So it's generally this little bit here that's got adhesive on it and then that bit there that's got adhesive on it and generally that has adhesive on it as well but it's got none of that so you want to put that aside right so then what we'll do is we'll take out the home button so for the actual home button itself all you need to do is just pop it up so it kind of opens up really weird um, you can slightly lift it up So you can slightly lift it up, but that flex that it's connected to is connected to the screen. So this kind of opens up like a book, so it'll open up downwards or to the right, and then the bit that it's connected to kind of folds up. So what I do is I just tend to get my nails in between both of them and pop it up, and that will push that back. Obviously you can use other tools to get that up can use your spudger to just kind of get in between it and pop it up but obviously with this home button you want to be as careful as possible because if you am, end up damaging the home button cable um, you, will, you won't be able to use your home button again um, you can't even swap these out these are all um, software based so they're actually tied to your main board so if you damage that you will have no home button again um, there are things out there that you can use, um, like Bluetooth home buttons and stuff like that. Um, we haven't found a successful one that works 100%, but yeah, just to let you know, so try not to damage that cable at all. One of the easy ways to damage the home button flex cable is by taking it out. So the best way to do it is fall back the home button flex and you want to get an ISOSMO and just lift up the flex that it plugs into because it's its own separate bit trying to get underneath it's just its own little separate bit if you kind of push at it you can feel it move so you want to lift that up and that goes all the way up and then what you want to do is get your ISOSMO again and kind of from the back of it is to get underneath it so push put more pressure on getting into the digging into the frame itself just so you can get behind it without tearing it a 
and slowly just lifting it up and that will take a whole home button flex up and with the actual home buttons they come out from the front of the screen so what we're going to do is just pop it out and you can see it will fall straight from the front once the home button is out we just need to take off this back plate so the back plate is fairly straightforward it's got three screws on either side obviously that one there and that one there is missing so we'll just take out the center one and this you'll use your tri-ring screwdriver for and then it'll be the same on the other side you'll have three screws obviously the center one and that one's missing so we'll just take out the other two Once those six screws are taken out, you want to lift up the frame. Try not to do it from the top, because what it does from the top is the little flex cable that's here for this um, attaches to it, and you can end up ripping it. So generally tend to do it from the bottom, get a nice little grip on it. Just pull it up, you'll hear all the adhesive over there break, and then the top part, there's nothing. So you can see all the adhesive there that goes to the actual cable itself. Right, so we'll put that aside, and that is the old screen. Obviously, like I said, they've kept the film on it, but that is the old broken screen. So what we'll do now is we'll get a new screen and put all the parts back on it. All right, so with the new screen, the first thing you want to do is peel off any kind of tape or any film on it. So peel off that, obviously with these be careful because you can end up damage the cable. So I generally hold the cable in place while I peel it up. Um, peel off the red little film. Um, sometimes it'll have film covering the top. You want to peel that off as well. And then on these, they've got little brackets for your bottom screws. So take that off as well. Right, so that'll be the new screen so what we'll do is we'll just put everything back on it pretty much the same order or the reverse order of what we've took it off so we'll get the plate first you want to push these cables so they as pretty much as high as they can go I'm um, obviously trying not to like pull them and rip them but just push them back as far as they can go Hold them in place while you put on the actual back shield and you can push this adhesive down at the bottom that way it should hold it in place generally hold it anyway um, and then what we need to do is we need to put these side screws back into place right, so you want to put those screws in the side um, got some other screws that we'll put in because obviously there's missing half the screws in it so we've got some more screws that we can just pop in and then we'll do the same for the other side So once all those screws are in, we'll then put in the home button. So with the home button, generally screens come with this little film at the front of it. So what you need to do is just peel the film back a little bit, just so you can get access to the home button as well. And then push the home button from the front. Uh, generally do it that way, so the home button goes in like that. and then get it to go with a little flex, get it to go underneath that cable and it's got a little slot here you can just pop it in and then the home button itself make sure that is all 
nicely lined up. This anisole flush. And then you can put the film over the front of it just to keep it in place. So once it's all in place, you just want to pop it down. Sometimes that little cable that's plugged into doesn't quite sit right. So you get something like an isosomer, just on the connector, gently push it back just so you can pop the connector in and it sits all flush. Because if you try and start bending the top connector to press it down into the bottom connector, um, you could end up damaging the home bone cable. So it's better to push the bottom cable into place and then the top connector, which is part of the home bone, just pops straight in. Alright, so once that's in place, <coughs> you want to then get the bracket for the home bone. So just pop that on. It only goes in one way. Um, you can see the little two silver bits there. On the bottom it doesn't have that. So the two little silver cutouts need to be at the top. And then you want to just screw that into place. So four little tri screws. Just pop them in. I generally, for this one, I put the right hand two right hand screws in first, then the left hand screw, and then put the home button one in last. And what I tend to do with the home button one is not tighten it too tight, put it in, but get it to a point where it kind of catches, and then don't move it anymore. Because if you do it too tight, you could actually end up damaging the home button itself. Right, so that's the home button in place. <coughs> right, so we now want to put in the proxy sensor. So with the proxy sensor, it fairly all just clips into place. So you've got those two little notches there, and the two little holes over there. So you just want to pop those two in place. Like I said, that bit normally comes with adhesive. With this one, it doesn't have adhesive, so it won't stick into place when you put it in there, generally it just sticks into place. So we'll just hold it there. You want to move the front camera out of the way and then for the <coughs> for the proxy, it's got little brackets that it sits in both there and there. You just want to pop them in. You can find feel them click in. Once that's in place, you can then get the loudspeaker or the earpiece. And you just want to pop the earpiece into place. But it can only go one way. It's got the little copper bits at the bottom there. And then fold the front camera over. And then you just want to put the bracket on top of it. Right, and then we'll just screw that into place for the four screws we got. And then we'll go and get other screws for the other two that weren't there. make sure your front camera is aligned. It should do because it's got all the brackets in it. So that should all be fine. Alright, we'll just pop those other two screws in place that went there. Alright, so we'll get the other screw. Just pop that into place. Alright, so that will be everything transferred from the old screen to the new screen. Now it's just putting it back together. So what we'll do first is, obviously because that battery didn't have its adhesive in it, we'll get some adhesive, put on the back of the battery, and pop that back into place. All right, so we'll get some battery adhesive. What you want to do is you want to peel off the blue side first. And then you want to get the back of the battery. So easiest way to tell the back of the battery is 
um, for one, the best way to tell is the little connector. So it's just a flat silver plate there. On the other side, it's actually got the bit that connects in. So the bit that connects in is actually the back side of the battery. So you want to get that side, and then the side that's closest to the actual connector, that side there, that's the bottom of the battery. So you want to get your adhesive and put it with those little tabs at the bottom. So we're going to get them right to the edge, so pretty much line it up with that black bit. And then push the battery, the adhesive down. So you can sometimes just get like a little flat tool just to kind of push it just so it make sure it stays in place. Because sometimes you could lift up this little film and it pulls up the adhesive as well. So you just want to make sure that it stays in place. So once that's done, you can peel off these two little blue bits on the top here. And then you just want to fold those blue those adhesive bits over. So, <coughs> so once that's done, you just want to peel off this pink film and reveal the sticky side of the adhesive. You want to get your phone, just removing some old adhesive. Get your phone, and what you want to do is you want to plug in the battery first, just so it lines up the battery, so you don't pull all over the place and have to push the battery connector into place, and then push the actual battery down. And once it's seated nicely, lift up the battery connector again so it's unplugged. All right. So next, what we need to do before we put the screen on is we want to clean up the side of the actual device, little bezel. So what generally happens is the iPhone comes with some adhesive that sits around the side of the screen. So we want to replace that because generally when you peel it up, it peels off all the adhesive. And as you can see, there's not pretty much any adhesive on here apart from like little bits up there. That's pretty much it. But what you want to do is you want to just want to get like a flat tool or some tweezers. Um, I'll get a little flat screwdriver and just go around the edges and get up as much of the adhesive as possible. Or pretty much any dirt that's on there or anything like that. Just because what you want to do is you want to have a nice clean surface. So when you put the new adhesive on, it sticks in place. tend to do as well is get a little earbud and just wipe the rest off there we go So once that's all peeled off, you need to put the new adhesive on. So it generally peels off one way. So you peel that off like so. And that will pretty much be the exact size of the phone and will sit into the phone. So they only go in one way as well. They generally have a little cutout for like the rear camera. Um, if it doesn't have a little cutout for that, at the one of the sides, it'll have two little notch cutouts, and that is always the bottom side. So you just want to put that in. Um, best way to put it in is start off one corner, get that all lined up, and then push it down to the other corner, and that will just generally get it into the right place it needs to go. So once all the adhesive is on there, you just want to get a flat tool again, just go around the sides just so it catches to the actual frame. You don't end up peeling it off when you peel off the cover for the adhesive. <coughs> and 
And then what you want to do is you just want to peel off the top of it. Right, so what that generally leaves, um, and it should do this on most adhesives, is it'll leave another little cover over the sides. So what you can do now is you can peel off that, um, but obviously then when you start putting the screen, you can get the screen to attach to the adhesive and it'll go all over the place. So what you tend to do is just leave that bit on, and we'll get the screen, and we'll start putting down the screen. Um, so I generally put the top one on first, the top um, cable. So we'll pop that into place. And then what you want to do is because um, you don't want to flex the cables too much, you just want to kind of hold it at like pretty much like a 90 degree angle while you're plugging in all the rest. So we're plugging the two bottom cables. Once those are in, try not to like pull it too far away. Kind of leave it flat on the actual device itself, the screen, so it's not pulling at those cables or putting any tension on the cables. Then after that, you want to plug down the battery. Once you plug down the battery, we'll get the bracket, the battery and the screen, and we'll just put that on, and we'll screw that into place. Right, so we'll get some of the other screws that are missing, and we'll put those into place. Okay, so that's all the screws back into that little plate there. And then we'll do the same with the top little bracket. That only goes one way as well. Um, it'll be, so the longest flat bit will go to the top of the device. And then what you want to do is just screw those into place. So I've got new screws for both those as well. So we'll screw in one side and we'll screw in the other side. Right. So now that's all screwed into place. So what you want to do now is you want to peel off the old the, the adhesive cover. So it should peel off as one whole bit. all the way around. Go. And then the way to put it down is you want to clip in the top first. So the top kind of clips in with those little brackets. So you'll see it clip in and once it's clipped in you'll see it has a flat edge there at the top, right to the back. And then you want to put it all back down. So you've obviously got the cable on the side there, which you want to watch out for when you're putting it back down, because sometimes when you're putting the screen down, you can end up catching that cable right there. Right. That's what you want to do, is just push the connectors out of the way. Once they're out of the way, you can clip it all around the sides. There we go. That's all down. So what you need to do is just do the bottom two screws. So I just screw that back into place. There we go. So that's all into place. All we do is we'll just turn it on. And there we go. That's all good and working again. So as you can see, touch is all working again. That's everything all good. Boom. So there we go, that was a replacement on the iPhone 7 screen in white. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.